In this video, we're going to talk about tissues. We're going to get started um, and start looking at connective tissues. Just a reminder to the last video about levels of organization. While the focus of this chapter is on tissues, we want to always be able to connect tissues to the cells that make them up, as well as the tissues that will make up various organs of the human body. Throughout this chapter, we're gonna learn about the four main types of tissues within the human body. So all organs within the human body are composed of connective, epithelial, muscular, and neural tissues in various combinations. Don't be too overwhelmed. We'll split each of these topics kind of into their own little unit and do microscope work and test over each. Always keep in mind the idea of structure and function. So as we learn each of the tissues, you'll want to be familiar with an example of which organ or organs it could be found in. You don't wanna just say what organ it's in, you should be able to tie in the function. And if we're tying in the function, we should be able to talk about the cell population that makes up the tissue. Okay, so we'll be looking for the structure, what cells and or fibers make up the tissue. How does that link to a function of the tissue and how would that tissues function help with the organs function? All right, so moving into um, connective tissues. Connective tissues are the most diverse tissues within the human body. Um, there's lots of examples, but it's a good starting point because they are so diverse. So in order to determine that it is a connective tissue and not epithelial, muscular, or neural tissue, we would look for three basic components. And those three basic components are specialized cells, fibers, and the presence of a ground substance. So a lot of stuff going on on this slide. Um, you can write down your descriptions, but some of the things to make note of, um, when we talk about cells, we might say that it's dominated by one type or that it's a mix of multiple cell types. So that's kind of a preview of where we'll be going with the cell types. The five cells listed down here are the ones that we'll see as we go through connective tissues. And we'll talk a little bit about cells and fibers in the next slide. Fibers, the presence of protein fibers is unique to connective tissues um, compared to the other types of tissues that we'll cover in the human body. The term matrix, ref matrix refers to anything that's surrounding the cells within the tissue. So we know that cells make up tissues, but connective tissues are unique because they're going to contain fibers as well as a ground substance. We won't be able to tell the texture of it um, other than what it's described as in a textbook, but there's going to be kind of like space around the cells. So we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get into the visuals of each of these connective tissues. Takeaways from this chart would be the five possible choices for cells and the three possible choices for fibers. Ground substance we'll hit on a little bit, um, but it's not as important to me as recognizing what the cells and the fibers are. So cells and fibers will be important with connective tissues. How do you tell the difference? Visually, our microscopes are never gonna look this perfect, I'm sorry, but um, cells will be present in the terms of their shapes. Okay, so our cells are typically more of a round shape or kind of a random space, but you should always be able to see a nucleus within the cell. So that's a distinguishing point from the fibers. And fibers, the term tells you it's gonna be something that's long and stringy. So you'll have collagen fibers that are going to be thick, elastic fibers that are going to be stringy, and reticular fibers that are going to be kind of web-like. When we're not looking at a microscope slide or if the microscope slide is, I don't know, not as clear as that cartoon, you'll always have the option of having those words in front of you. So cells are always gonna end in two typical suffixes, sites, which means cells, or blasts, which means to build. Think of it as the idea that cells are the building blocks of tissue. So if um, you see a name that ends in blast, it's helping build that tissue. 
fibers, you only have three options. Um, elastic is the one that probably stands out as most familiar. You have elastic strands in like the pants that you wear. Um, collagen, you may have heard it as like getting collagen fillers for your skin, um, but this is a long, thick, durable fiber. Reticular, this is gonna be the one that we use the least. Okay, so reticular is the one that I'm not going to emphasize as much as collagen and elastic. We'll see these two examples much more often than we do reticular. All right, lastly, I just want to introduce to you um, the three types of connective tissues. So connective tissues, think of it as that's the main umbrella, and then there's three subcategories to connective tissues. Connective tissue proper, supporting connective tissue, and fluid connective tissues. Each of these subcategories will have their own specific types of tissues within them based on their presence of those specialized cells, fibers, and their ground substance. Connective tissue proper will be the first group that we study and it would generally be described as having a varied cell population. So we'll see things like adipocytes and fibroblasts we will see a variety of collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. And we would describe that ground substance, the area kind of around the cell, as viscous or syrupy, okay? <laughs> Again, not something we can really texturally explore in this chapter, but just knowing that it's, it does have a fluid within it, but it's not necessarily a dominant fluid we will learn about four specific types that are cat categorized as connective tissue proper, and those are areolar, adipose, dense regular, and dense irregular. Supporting connective tissues would be dominated by one or of two types of cells. So we'll talk about cartilages and we'll talk about bone. All of the cartilage tissues will have chondrocytes as the dominant cell type, and bone will have osteocytes as the dominant cell type. We'll also kind of cut our um, fiber options back to just collagen and elastic. And the ground substance, we would just generally describe that as limited. Um, it's really gonna be packed space in these tissues and we'll see that as we learn them. The three types of cartilage are hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage, and bone is bone. <laughs> Lastly, fluid connective tissues, there's just two types here, blood and lymph. They will be dominated by their specific cell type, erythrocytes, which are more commonly called red blood cells in blood, and lymphocytes in lymph. When you think of your blood, you don't picture it as it being like stringy at all. So the fiber presence here is their dissolved protein. So under most normal conditions, you don't have insoluble fibers or stringiness present in these fluids. And the ground substance here is very abundant and it's watery. So that allows for the transport of these different tissues. So again, we'll be going through each of these types in detail. You'll look at them, um, what it would look like under the microscope. I'll give you some hints of how to remember it and you'll get plenty of time to practice finding them and identifying them under the microscope, but that's just a preview of connective tissue.